Well, oh. it, Milty More... covered all this tournament all by his own because he's a uh, don't know great guy. Or I'll, something like that. I'll do a shout out like Milty. Shout out to Milty on his own stream. Boom. <laughs> Perfect. I can do some shout outs to me myself, um, but I think that's kind of gay. Don't know. <laughs> anyway, shall we move on to the game? So. Yes. Riku as Tech Marine, Noisy as Chaos Sorcerer, Fate as Orcs, and Fear as Tyranids. So, what do you think of the like the commander choices and the relation to the overall map? Um, yeah, the map is very known for a lot of um, garrisons and something like that, and, and mm -hmm. choke points and, and blocked uh, sites by uh, walls and stuff. And mm -hmm. I am kind of curious why Riku went for the Tech Marine. I mean, he can build turrets and thus uh, block some of these choke points and mm -hmm. I I imagine that this is his idea yeah I mean you have to bear in mind as well that the, the, the tech marine can be garrisoned in the bottom building which we can promptly take control now now he's gonna throw the tech marine in it and take out his scouts you know classic map control into securing it with look at that damage already on the war boss that's already over a, a 200 damage and that's just the war boss capping yeah. so like yeah He's already secured that, and Orcs really can't do anything about this in the very early game. Very true, yeah. They basically have to get the burners and the sluggers, or wait mm -hmm. until T2, uh, so they get stick Which, in itself, is still not uh, an effective counter to the Tech Marine being in that building. Yet, no, the Tech Marine has way too much health and doesn't bleed. Mm -hmm. And you have to also keep in mind that and if you burn that house, unless you instantly occupy that building straight after, he can immediately ungarrison after you, you you're, you know. Yes, like yes, after, yes. Yeah, sorry, re-garrison after the burn that house wears off. So anyway, incoming flank. So this, this is going to be a 2v1 on fate. And he promptly starts to spread to the winds. As he is very scared of those two Chaos Heretics, which can do so much damage with their Doom Blast. Yeah, I... I um have uh, streamed another game with Noisy and I was pretty surprised that he uh, actually went for his uh, extended tier 1 builds even in a team game. Oh. Yeah, well look, look he's, he's doing a very noisy build right now, he's got three heretics and, yeah, and you know with his micro. Oh yeah, these sluggers are in big already. trouble, yes they do go down. And like here come the spore mines which are designed to deal with, look at ev it's great against everything, especially the heretics, but so Noisy is going to have to be extremely careful but and interestingly enough, Fear is not actually going for the the heretics, which are, are no. arguably much more effective, and they're completely wasted. Anyway, uh, going to top since we've been neglecting that, um, Fear actually putting down a lot of pressure on the top. So, yeah, um, who overall, true. who do you think's done doing better right now? Uh, pardon? Who do you think is doing better right now? Uh, Team-wise, um, it, it's difficult to say to a level really. Um, Fear has. Re retained the, the top completely, so um, they can. They have two more red points. Uh, mm -hmm. the, he even caps the natural um, power point well, from bottom bottom power for for noisy. Like he he decaps that doom blast and uh, retre instantly retreats, saving the squad. But um, I think that the, the main thing is that there there is that acknowledgement. Okay, here here come the tech marine turrets to try to yeah. hold the position. It can be flanked, as you can see. It's, it's pretty much yeah. in the flank it's, right it's, now. It's, so. The sluggers um, are even yeah. in the position to do so right now. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, that's poor, poor, poor micro from Fate, where like his, his shooters were in range, so he got his sluggers suppressed, even though the sluggers were already out of range. But the the, the point I was going to bring up was that you kind of have to accept that against like races like orcs and and tyranids, you're going to be giving up map control early on. It doesn't you you, you can't unless it's uh it's a woefully matched uh, pairing like uh, there shouldn't be any problem whatsoever for these races to take early map control it's yeah, a question sure. of um, can uh, you know noisy and Riku hold the position long enough okay these heretics are gonna go down so that's one heretic spot gone but lost his trade massive trades outside the yeah. eastern base Homagon's dying no they'll be fine they'll be fine they, they, they've got Three the HP? yeah oh, but yeah. They've, they've lost the snaps they're fine they're fine like uh, anyway but yeah, so definitely the next phase of the game has to be to do with um, the West, like Western team trying to take out this turret at bottom and the Eastern team trying to reassert map control on, at the top. But yeah, yeah, this turret is really well placed. I mean, um, hmm. it covers so much. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's very, very hard for um, 
these two commanders to sneak something past because it's like it's not like uh, you know Farseer who can use invisible gate like gate invis or yeah. like rangers or you know hide the boys because then you can just flank the turret easily and there, there isn't a problem. But it is right now that is a very dominating turret. Look at mid, there's more action on the way. Like Fears Victor Alpha in trouble, but uh, just fine. Um, Chaos Sorcerer going in, getting the Sword of Flame, which will be very good against both these races. Paired with the Heretic, that will do a lot of damage. Yeah, he's, um, he's all also gone for Havox, which is the decent choice again, because of the choice of two points, and again, um, yeah. Well, look at, what, look at this. Like, oh, wait, I, I'm losing you for a sec. Nolte? Yes, I'm here. Right, I lost you for a second there, but, um, yeah, have, have a look at the resource tab. Like, this, like the team with more power income is Noisy and Riku. Even though they lost the their power for a while, it's yeah. just because they had the gen farm up for longer, and they have made maximal impact out of the turret. Like the other team only had one generator until not very long ago. But look at this pressure coming on this turret now. Like this is going to be a flanking maneuver combined with two burners. <laughs> this won't work. It might. It's. Tough. It's really hard to tell, but like, oh, the slugger should have gone for the tax. I think if, if they wanted to try for it, but I guess they just wouldn't, didn't want to take any more losses. Yeah, especially since uh, the tax are not covered by this uh, turret. Mm -hmm. Oh, the homer gun's gonna go down though. Ouch. Oh yeah, I missed that. No, no, they they, they 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 had to retreat from the turret, and obviously they didn't have enough health to get away from that turret, having to retreat through the turret's arc, you know. Yeah. So Noisy electing not to replace his third heretic squad, considering it, possibly considering it just transitory, but now look at the map control, like e um, Noisy and Riku have stabilized the situation and are going to be holding pretty good map control considering they they wiped the, the Hormagon to fear and fate is still down to three squads. Yeah, I mean he lost uh, one of his Slugger boys early and uh, he replaced them. Do, do you think Riku's just skipping, going to go to T2? Because he hasn't bought a unit and he can pretty much tech. <laughs> I, I think he made a blunder not uh, going to T2 at this point. I mean, he, he could you, purchase you think just anything. Blunder. I mean, it, it, the point is that um, they completely secured bottom with this turret and really a shock and scout and the attack could hold that turret forever. Like, unless uh, noisy, sorry, fear and fate send their whole army, right? But yeah. oh look at this oh look at this play with this uh with this uh what was it best sigil of the rift and where did oh noisy <laughs> noisy put through his uh his chaos space wings through it and brought his heretics through it but like the heretics oh they, he probably didn't mean to send everything through or, or didn't mean to send the swap he wanted to bring one of them to him or the other way around but seems like a slight misplay but amusing nonetheless um yeah. wow I think that must yeah the. Ouch! That that was a lot of termagons dying at, um, at top left um, power yeah. point. And he makes uh, fear bleed like crazy at the moment. Um, who still manages to go through tier two first? Uh, I would say that um, Noisy and Riku have a slight advantage. It's not massive, especially considering that Noisy going for his classic heavy T one means that he's always going to be one of the last players to T2, like he texts it now. Yes. Um, it's not going to be a big disadvantage from teching, if any, so... I'm, no, I'm I mean, really he, wondering... He, hmm? he does on. have um, several uh, units that transition well into T2, um, since he has Havox. Um, mm -hmm. He could uh, thus um, upgrade to oh, some... Oh, look at the Warboss, look at the Warboss! Oh, the Warboss goes down. Ah, to the turret. Just I I'm I'm really starting to question how much, like, uh, fear and fate are headbutting themselves on this turret because in the end, it's controlling four points. I mean, yes, though they're very important points, but had had they committed all their troops to the top, that's a 250 30 power investment that is never going to come back, and they could have just controlled all the top and all and the middle, and they would have held better map control than. Noisy and Riku, right? I mean, I know it's it like it's a slightly it's slightly unfavorable to follow this tactic, but it's far more unfavorable to headbutt yourself against a turret, right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. And yeah, Riku now has uh, some plasma cannon devastators on the field. Mm -hmm. 
who and he's getting a dreadnought yeah. already. So this is going to be some heavy firepower. So not only that, but a, a dog is coming out as well. So there's the um, yeah the danger coming from uh, heavy melee as well. Mm -hmm. And in yeah, go on. Yeah, if you see these um, sluggers are just in the front taking all the damage with um, uh, art boys on them. Just to delay uh, all these uh, heretics and chaos stuff coming oh, out of this. Oh, brutal! Plasma yeah. Cannon hits his own scout squad and takes <laughs> out three models. Oh, Sigil of the Rift play here. Oh, there's a nice play from Noisy. Isolating, bringing through the Warrior Brood and suppressing them in the face. And also throwing the he Chaos Heretics and having a, a, an attempt on the zone throw at the same time. It doesn't fully work out, but it's a nice play nonetheless. Yeah, he made very nice Sigil plays. I don't know if you uh, follow the stream at all, but he... No, I'm uh, afraid that's... He uh, used the uh, Sigil of the Rift to great effect in, in the past games. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's really um, he, he sigils his uh, melee units like con marines. I don't know if he will go for con marines this game, but just in yeah. retreat pass or something like that. And a heretic squad in retreat pass is quite risky because right now it can't it can't attack a, a slug a slugger boys. It's not very good against the war boss. Although, admittedly, if the war yeah. boss has no investment in him, then he, he at level one is useless. Um, Death dread can't melee yeah. that. It's it mainly the warrior boots, but they, you know, they get they get snared by termagants, and I, I think that would be a bit of a questionable choice considering he only has one CSM squad. But overall, there has been a lot of fighting up and down, up and down the central path, obviously, and I think it was really amazing how Noise Dan Riku held a united front and expect, like, you know, it, it was a very very well positioned team play there, and they defended on both fronts. Like, very well. Oh, Black Crusher is getting warped out? No. It is not going to get out. No, okay. Um, it, I... Again, though, it is just a Blood Crusher and um, the, 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 the... Oh, teleport bugged out. Says, yeah, oh, wasted I, 100 I, red. I, uh, in fact, just switched to the Sorcerer to see it and the uh, warp animation uh, got yeah, displayed. Yeah, as well. It didn't, didn't work. Yeah, I mean... I kind of felt that maybe, oh, he here comes, uh, there's going to be a spore mine drop. So this position is not going to be defensible anymore. And oh, actually, maybe it is. No, 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 they, they, they might as well retreat and heal. Oh, no, Havoc stay. Fair enough. I thought it would get out of range of it quick enough, but maybe it got path locked. Okay, if you look at the uh, bottom now, um, the death rate mm -hmm. is burning some power. Um, the turret is gone, but there's yeah. the dreadnought uh, just causing havoc on all the sluggers. And Riku is coming to defend the stuff with his uh, scouts as well. Shotguns, yes. Like uh, w when I play when I played with Riku in the past, he, he, he really favored the assault cannon. But here he's opted to keep it in melee, which I think is an excellent choice, considering it completely hard counters the Death Dread and the the, the two Slugger boys. It's uh, it's doing a lot of work here. Yes. Oh, and then the flame from the Death Dread kills the scouts that are garrisoning. Oh no, special! Ouch. Not only that, um, he lost his second squad squad and his hero in, in this process. Ouch. That must have hurt. Yeah, and we see still, Con Marines I'll... for Nozzy. Oh, that is interesting. I'm guessing, I guess he wants to really just overwhelm Fear's back line. Because the Orcs should be able to hold up even against like double heretics and... Hmm. Yeah, and, and, and Fear is... I'm not sure. He is really um, a player who likes to blob up a lot with his uh, turnips. I think it will mm -hmm. get punished hard by Noisy since Noisy is such an uh, amazing player and he knows his op options. Mm -hmm. So he's opted for the, de uh, the demon armor here, so that should be really effective against Fierce ranged blob. Oh, beautiful doom blobs! Oh my god, look at that damage. Synapse aside, that, that was a lot of damage onto that blob. Okay, Death Dread is way overextended. Cannot, cannot stay. It's gonna just sacrifice itself. Is it? And all these Doom Balls, Look at this. This block is just taking yeah. so much damage. I think I think Fear really needs to make an effort to try to avoid it. That's, that's a good snare though from the Zone Throw. We'll keep the Death Dread alive. Oh, he's got the Plasma Cat to the face. Oh my word! Fear, come on. <laughs> you, yeah, I mean you cannot Did stand you? still against artillery. Every like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what else yeah. to say there. Ouch! Shooters might die here. 
Oh my god. Yeah. Fetty, That's uh, against Sigil's Sigil 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 way. It, yeah, I, I, I think... Sigil out and damn. Yeah, I think Fate and Fear are really just being overwhelmed, like, just haven't got time to micro because they're just under so much pressure right now. Look look at the map control, it's about to become very, very blue, and I know for a fact that you have the same colors as me. Yeah, Yay. I have. <laughs> I mean, 451 to 144 and Noisy and Dark Week is favored, but it doesn't really feel relevant considering that they are in T3, and they are going to get out their T3 units, and... Fear and Fate are just not going to be ready for them. Not, yeah. I mean, on the other hand, if you see it, um, Fear and Fatty just played like uh, four games in a row, so they mm -hmm. might just be some kind of exhausted and. Yeah, they, they, they might be, but at the same time, like. I mean, okay, yes, I think Fatty is. Uh, is Australian? I think. So, I mean, I, maybe they're both Australian, I'm not sure. But So it is a lot later for. Whoever it is who is Australian, uh, it is for us. Uh, from Australia, and it is uh, about uh, 11 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, and they've been playing since eight hours ago or yeah. whatever. Right. So they they, they got, crawled out of the bed like uh, 3 a.m. or something like that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's an incredible effort to Good luck get out of that at that time. But but oh my word, I mean. Th these sluggers are just useless and, yep, promptly concede. Right. Yeah. Okay, so 1-0 uh, oh for Noisy and Riku in this grand final from this monthly Rumble Tournament, edition 5. Yes. I'm glad somebody's keeping track of the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to. Oh, what? Eerie would get mad or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, no, um, I'm uh, uploading all these videos to the YouTube channel of the Monthly World mm -hmm. Tournament, ah, so I, I in fact know all the uh, numbers and so on.